Hello everyone, we have been play around with Stable Diffusion Animate Diff for a while, and in the recent few days, I have been trying out with some segmentation and mask, add it into the animation workflow with more features, bring the animation result more customizable from the comfy UI workflow, sometime, well, we don't need to follow the new shiny objects, back to the foundation and mastering it enable us to understand more how comfy UI and diffusion model works. Let's get started. So here's the new update of the Comfy UI Animate Diff workflow. I'm using another new group that allows you to modify your characters or backgrounds, giving them different hairstyles. This can even be done with the output obtained from the IP adapter output. However, I still have the ability to modify the outfit styles, hairstyles, backgrounds, etc. Now, here's the new group that utilizes segmentations. Recently, Dr. LT Data shared some excellent videos demonstrating how to use the Comfy UI Inspired Pack and Comfy UI Impact Pack. These two packs are available for download. The Comfy UI Impact Pack is particularly useful when you want to do more advanced photo editing, image manipulation, or video animation editing. It offers beneficial features, especially the segmentations and masks that Dr. LT Data has contributed to the community. The segmentations and masks are incorporated into Comfy UI custom nodes. Today, I'll be using them to add more features that enable you to customize your output animations and videos. Previously, I utilized the segmentations and the Coco segmentator to influence the output characters. By masking the output characters from the source videos and utilizing the IP adapter, I was able to influence the character's outfits. This is where the IP adapter comes into play. I have also made an update to the IP adapter groups. Now you can use a single IP adapter loader to process both the character IP adapter image and the background IP adapter image. These are then passed to a regional IP adapter. Previously, I had two separate IP adapter groups. Let me run the previous versions of this workflow. In the earlier versions, as you can see, we had two IP adapter groups. Both of them were connected to the Clip Vision's IP adapter models, resulting in duplicated loadings in each group. This placed a heavier load on the computer system when executing the prompts and passing the data into the models. It had to be done twice within these groups. But then I decided to combine both the character IP adapter and the background IP adapter into one group. This allows us to minimize the loading size each time we execute the prompts. Now we can have just one SD model from our main loader group and we can pass the IP adapter plus the Clip Visions models all at once. We leverage the regional IP adapters since we already have segmentations to mask the characters and backgrounds. This can be achieved by using the regional IP adapter. This method from Comfy UI is truly life-saving. People often ask if there's an automatic method, and now I can confidently say that even the automatic 11 method has IP adapter models in the control net. However, using segmentations to highlight the characters can be challenging. In my previous segmentation mask group, I highlighted the characters from the videos, frame by frame. It was able to detect these characters and only modify the styles within the highlighted areas. The output consisted of the characters from the source of videos while the background remained blank appearing black. The animated models then processed all the animations for the restyled characters. Additionally, we used the IP adapter for the backgrounds to handle the heavy lifting when it comes to background styles. In this particular case, I simulated a living room setting. Similar to TikTok influencers dancing in their living rooms, creating a specific atmosphere. It's amazing how AI can accomplish this, and I must say the results are very close to realistic. As you can see, this is only in the first sampling group. I further enhanced the details in this group, so I should rename it. It's not just for the face anymore. This can now be considered the second sampling group which I refer to as the detailer group. 
It heavily relies on the impact pack from Dr. LT data and it provides an excellent sample detector for element diff. This enables us to perform segmentations using the models from Ultralytics. I have discussed this workflow in previous videos and it's truly remarkable. We can detect the face, hands, and fashions with great accuracy. Even the entire bodies of the characters can have their details enhanced. In this second sampling group, I mainly focus on hands and the person as a whole. For scenes with multiple people dancing or action scenes where multiple people are in front of the camera, I use the person segmentations group to add more detail and enhance the character's bodies. Then it is passed to the segmentations detailers to perform the second sampling. So yeah, this is a good thing already. We have done this in many previous versions of this workflow and it works very well. In this group, we have the modified videos created using segmentations. Now, with these segmentations, we can highlight specific areas and apply different styles. You can use math segmentations to pass it to the detailer for anime diff and run one-time samplings. This allows us to create new videos based on the highlighted areas and process them with the desired styles specified in the text prompt. The text prompt is from the basic pipe V2, which comes from the data obtained from the detailer groups. We have two basic pipes and we pass the same set of data to the second segmentations group detailers. Let's run it once and see how it goes. This is just a group that I implemented and let's check for any errors that we can fix in these videos. Starting from here, I created one more group where I exported some image frames from my previous detailer groups. I passed around 10 images here so that I have more chances to pick a good one. Sometimes the first one may be a bit blurry, but usually as he suggested, just one image is enough. However, in this case, I'm using 10 images to increase the likelihood of selecting a clear one that shows the characters or backgrounds I want to edit. For instance, I can choose this one and then right-click to copy the clip space. Then I can come here and paste the clip space. Now I have the exact same image that I used earlier. Next, I right-click again and open it in the mass editor. Now we can make some adjustments here. For example, if I want to give her sunglasses, I can highlight the areas where I want to make the changes. This is similar to what we do with InPaint. This is how we can achieve it in Comfy UI. After highlighting everything, we click Save, and there we go. We have the area that we highlighted, and then right here, we can see the image and pass it to the mask. The mask is then changed to segmentations. However, sometimes you may encounter failures in the in-painting process, like in this case. You have to test these highlighted areas with different text prompts and also experiment with denoising strength ratios for the refiner's CFG steps. It's essential to test and fine-tune these parameters. That's the basic concept of making the characters wear sunglasses. I have the master image here and I transform it into segment objects. Finally, I adjust the values of all the settings necessary to achieve the desired sunglasses effect. And there you go, we got it. Moving on to the text prompt, we specify sunglasses, futuristic styles, and black color. This prompt is injected into the pipeline. In between, we have the edit pipeline updated with positive prompts which are then put into the animated detailer's segmentation pipe. I experimented with different denoise numbers, such as 0 0.5, 0 0.6, and 0 0.7. Ideally, a range between 0 0.6 and 0 0.7 is suitable for adding something to the existing image frame. Regarding the refiner ratios, initially, I set it to 0 0.5, but I realized that refining too much can lead to unrelated styles appearing in the mastered area. I didn't want those unrelated style results, so I turned it down. Fortunately, the samplers helped me generate the sunglasses in the final result. And there you have it, the desired outcome. However, there are pros and cons to consider. 
on the positive side, it's relatively easy to add items to existing animations. On the downside, it's important to avoid animations with excessive movement. For example, in this case, if the head moves too much in the last second, the sunglasses may completely move off the face. This happens because the sunglasses position remains fixed while the head or face moves upwards. It's important to avoid using animations with significant movements or situations where, for example, a dress can be mistaken for pants. Dr. LTT data demonstrates this in his YouTube videos where static objects work well. A little movement is acceptable, but excessive movement, like a hat changing angles dramatically, will make it look unnatural. So be cautious and consider these factors when using this group before applying it to your animations. And that's it for the tips on using segmentation for animations in ComfyUI. I'll see you in the next videos. Have a nice day. Bye.